Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one is about buffering, specifically line buffering and block buffering in commands. Um, this came up during a recent stream where I was talking about my, actually let's do it in this tab, my bash aliases, bash aliases. And people were asking, why do I pass dash dash line buffered to grep? Um, and I'm gonna show you what the difference between the two buffering types is today, as well as a little demonstration as to why I do that. Um, to get started though, I'm going to unalias grep just to uh, make sure that I'm not dealing with my alias here. Oh, my alias grep. And yeah, so now we just are dealing with, with normal normal grep, no, no special alias here. Um, but yeah, let's start first by making a small Python script that's going to print some output in a loop. And I'll be able to show you uh, line versus block buffering just with Python, and then we'll extend it to, to grep as well. So let's open up a Python script. Um, we're just gonna do while true, we're gonna import time, and I'm just going to periodically print some output inside this script here. So we're just gonna do print, I think I just did a bunch of highs. Um, when I did this before, and then time dot sleep, uh, let's just sleep a tenth of a second. So when we run this script uh, interactively, so in a, in a normal terminal, uh, Python is going to do what's called line buffering. That is, anytime a line is printed, it will show up on the screen basically immediately. So you'll see here, you know, every tenth of a second, we're getting another set of highs here. Now, interestingly enough, if you take Python and you pipe it to cat, this makes it no longer interactive, so the output is part of, or no, is part of a pipe. Uh, Python switches from line buffering to block buffering, and this is a, you know, a bit of a performance versus developer experience hack here. Um, block buffering is much more efficient because it means it has to do system calls much less often. It doesn't have to, you know, write the data out immediately. It instead keeps it in memory until a specific block is filled up, and then it flushes all of that at once. So you can see here, there's no output that's happening, but it is actually still printing behind the scene. Um, and eventually it'll fill up that block and then you'll get a chunk of output all at once. Actually probably have to decrease the sleep in order for that to happen. So let's, uh, let's decrease the sleep down to a hundredth of a second. Um, and you'll see, uh, even with that, it takes a while to fill up. Interesting. Um, I could increase the amount of text I write. Okay, there you go. So you can see a block a block eventually showed up there, um, but it took a while for it to show up. And that's because that entire buffer had to fill up until Python was like, okay, I have a decent chunk of output. I can do that in one write call instead of having a lot of small write calls. Uh, so this only did one sys call to, that, to do that entire chunk instead of you know one for every single line, which would be much, much slower. So it's a bit of a performance high. Now, this also extends to grep as well, so let's put that back to point one here. Um, you'll notice that grep, when it's interactive, so when it's standard out, is a terminal. Uh, let's do grep high. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> we need to make sure, because Python's output right now is, is buffered, we also need to force Python to be unbuffered. And we can do that in two ways. One, by passing dash u to Python. This puts Python in unbuffered mode. You can also use the environment variable python un python unbuffered io equals one. Uh, that'll also oh I must have typed it. Python un did I, did I spell it wrong? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, python three python unbuffered. I guess I don't need io on the end there. Okay, so this will also put Python into unbuffered mode as well. Uh, the third way you can do that is by putting flush equals true on the print on the print call, and this will force this will force a flush to the standard output. So if we go back here again, remove both of the ways to do unbuffering, you'll see that it works like this. And so grep again by default is uh, line buffered, which is which makes sense for you know terminal output or whatever. Uh, but say you're like tailing a log or you know, I don't know, tailing a log was the original use case that I had for it. Uh, so when I worked at Yelp, we had this script when you were doing a push called tail app errors, and you would, it would normally do a lot of output spew of errors because there were a lot of errors that just never got fixed at Yelp, uh, for better or worse. 
And as a pushmaster, I wanted to know if new errors got introduced. So I maintained my own list of grep-vs, uh, which reduced the output, like eliminated lines that I didn't care about. Um, and then, you know, after the grepping, I would pass it into a pretty printer so you could see the full output. Um, but this meant that grep was in the middle of a pipeline, and so it was not acting as line buffer, but it was acting as block buffered. So you can see here, grep is now acting block buffered. Um, and so that's why I added dash dash line buffered, and you can see now it, you know, performs line by line. Uh, so necessarily dash dash line buffered will make grep perform uh, you know, less less performantly because it has to do flushes more often, but it's so <laughs> it's so worth it because if you ever need to pipe the output of grep into something else, you kind of want immediate line buffering to happen there. Um, but anyway, that's that's um, block buffering versus line buffering, as well as why I use dash dash line buffered in my grep alias. Uh, but hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.